Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you tuning in. This is episode 25 of Talk Time with Jay Allen Photography. This is Jason. And let's see here. If this is the first time for you turning in, I am a photographer based out of San Antonio, Texas. I'm retired Air Force. I've been uh, shooting portraits at a, a good level for probably about the last six years. I specialize with high school senior photography and dance photography, whether it's an eight-year-old dancer or a 25-year-old dancer, uh, but that's kind of where I specialize. I do family portrait sessions, I do maternity sessions, but my bread and butter sessions are high school senior sessions and dance photography. I've done a couple weddings. I don't truly enjoy them. Uh, I do some volume shoots with some dance studios which I absolutely love those and those to me are my weddings those are where I really want to get going and because not that this is all about money but it sure is nice to make money and with a session like a, a volume session with a, a ballet studio is nice because it's a lot more money faster paced, right? So it's basically like a wedding, right? It's it's a long day, but it's a pretty good chunk of money for that type of day. So it's still not my favorite thing because I personally prefer to work with one-on-one -on -one or like a one with a, a couple, that type of thing. That's, that's more fun to me because I get to control a little bit more the environment. But with, you know, like a, a recital session, for a studio, you still kind of get to control. You're controlling the light for sure, uh, but you get to kind of work different poses with each of the dancers, and and that's fun. That's fun to do. But yeah, so that's kind of me in a nutshell. Uh, portrait photographer. I I've done some landscape stuff. Don't truly enjoy it because there's nothing that interesting about it. the The cool thing is with landscape stuff is, you know, I'm in Colorado Springs right now sort of on vacation but sort of not uh we went to this art gallery and this guy is basically selling his portraits you know on um metal prints man, man they're absolutely gorgeous and I, I feel like if i wanted to be a landscape photographer living in san antonio is not the place for that uh you know we've got the beautiful hill country we've got a cool small downtown vibe but it, it's nothing like the canvas that Colorado has. It's nothing like the Rocky Mountains. And some of this guy's work was just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and I feel like if I wanted to do landscape stuff, that's where I'd want to do it. And I would want to print it out because I think the landscape area here in Colorado is just absolutely gorgeous. I know there are plenty of people that love, you know, the, the West in Texas, you know, there's basically some desert and that kind of stuff. And that's cool. But I don't, if I'm going to drive eight hours West Texas, I'm going to drive 12 hours to Colorado and take pictures there. And that's just me. That's kind of what I want to do. But here we are, episode 25. Uh, what is it about photography that actually pulls you in? What is it that keeps you shooting? You know, that golf shot, right? What is it about that? Like, I used to play golf. Uh, I sucked at it. I wasn't any good. Uh, I had golf clubs. Uh, I enjoyed getting to hang out with friends and do it, but it was just so stressful, so annoying. But then you get that one good shot. You know, out of 18 holes, you maybe get like th five shots that are decent, and those kind of like keep pulling you back. You're like, dude, I, I, I can do it. I just can't do it. <laughs> But what is it about photography that keeps me coming back or keeps you coming back? I've really been thinking about that lately, and, and I don't feel like I can actually put a finger on it. I, I don't know what it is. I love to create. Uh, you know, in 2001, I was uh, five years into the, my military career, couldn't stand my job. And I wanted to retrain into a different job. And I was able to retrain in the graphic design career field. This is back when the Air Force actually had designers. They don't now. But I had done some art and, you know, stuff like that when I was growing up. And I guess I was decent. I took a couple of art classes in college. I enjoyed it. But I was able to retrain out of the job that I was in and become a graphic designer 
And, you know, a graphic designer in the Air Force is definitely different than a graphic designer out in the real world. You know, you're very structured still. You're very kind of in the box and, you know, it's all planes, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Um, all blue, you know, different shades of blue, different planes, but still all blue. Uh, but, you know, it, it allowed me to still to be able to create. And as I was retraining, we were really they were going away from dry media and they were going into digital media. So I learned Photoshop very early on, uh, 2001, I think it was Photoshop five, something like that, 5.5, but I was able to create and I, I loved it. And I did the job until 2008 when the air force again said, you know what? I don't think we need designers. We need more multimedia. Uh, we need more public affairs, and so they got rid of that job and I retrained as a broadcast journalist. So that's where I learned uh, the video side of things, how to shoot video, how to edit video, how to tell like a news story, that type of thing. And that was also cool, but it wasn't fully what I enjoyed. And so I still did a lot of the design aspect of it. I still um, freelanced as a designer uh, even to the point where I got to my first duty station as a broadcast journalist and they were losing their design contractor. And so they were like, hey, you used to be a graphic designer. You want to keep doing that? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Sure. So I still shot a little bit of video, but I still did most of the design stuff. Uh, somewhere along the way, I picked up photography. It was with my first deployment and you know, I was taking pictures of my car before, but, you know, I, I, I loved the look. I loved um, creating something that I was actually able to set up and do. You know, I would pull the car in at this specific angle or turn the wheels at this specific angle, turn on the lights or turn off the lights. Am I pairing it with another car? Uh, I wasn't really putting people in the photos, but, you know, it was something that was drawing me that auto photography was kind of drawing me and and I really liked the look of it. I, I liked cars, so that definitely helped. I loved Ford Mustangs and that's kind of really where I picked it all up is I bought a Mustang and I wanted to take pictures of the car. So I bought a camera and that's kind of really where I started and that's where the passion of photography started. But the problem was is I'm a people person and I love to be around people and auto photography is very much not people. It's just cars. Now, of course you have the client there that probably has the car, right? But you're, it's not the same. And so I kind of started to stretch a little bit and, and get out of the auto photography side of things. One, I didn't see any financial future in it. Uh, definitely Mustang people, as much as they love their cars, they just don't seem to have the money to put into pictures of their cars, right? Especially when, you know, as our phone cameras continue to get better and better, they can take pictures of that. Now, I didn't fully see that writing on the wall, but at this point, I'm glad that I really kind of went away from it. I do think that uh, if I was to stop doing portraits, people portraits, I would look to go back to doing uh, auto photography. I think it's really awesome. There's so many details in, in images, but I like people. And so that's one of the reasons why I also don't do landscape. That's one of the reasons I don't do nature is there's nobody else involved and I want to be around people. And I think that that is what draws me to my photography is the people. I remember really kind of when I was first starting to get better, I would really kind of push my own photography values out there. Like you need to get prints, you need to do this. And, and I still highly believe that people need to print their photos. It, you know, most people, at least most of my clients, they're not printing their work. They're putting my work on their phone or on the computer uh, and maybe I should start pushing more of that print side of the media because these are definitely, man, I'm going to jump here. 
so I watched, uh, my wife and I love true crime. And I watched this video, this, this 2020 or Dateline yesterday, something. It was uh, about a, a, a shooter fairly recently in Detroit, Michigan. And he goes to school and he does a, a mass shooting in school and, I mean, kills four people, wounds plenty of others. Sad story in and of itself. And one of the girls, it was two girls and two guys, yeah. And one of the girls, and I don't know why I see it like this, and I'm not trying to, I, I don't know. One of the girls had, she was a senior. She had senior photos done. And so when they pull up the image of each of these students, one was like a cell phone grab. Actually, three were probably cell phone grabs and one was a portrait. And you know what? Parents are going to love any pictures of their kids. But man, if you can create beautiful imagery for people to be re- remembered by. I-, I also look at it like this. My daughter modeled for me for years while I was trying to learn. And I think I I think it'll be really cool when she has kids or even grandkids and they look back and they see these pictures of their mom or grandma and they're like, wow, you were so beautiful. You were, were you a model or something? And she can say for that time in my life, I was, I think that's so cool. And I think that that really kind of is my position on these high schoolers, you know, they've had this whole certain aspect of their life up to this point, you know, whether it's good or bad or whatever, but a lot of them, most of the seniors that I've worked with, most of the high schoolers that I've worked with love life and are excited to go out and and do something different and, you know, start their adult life. You know, kids, that's all they want to do is grow up and be an adult. And then once they're an adult, they're like, oh man, if I can only go back. But I love being able to provide these students with beautiful images of themselves. Those are screenshots of who they are at that moment in time. And then 25, 35, 50 years later, their kids, their grandkids can look back at these and just see these beautiful images. And it's the people to me that draw me to photography. Uh, I, I don't know what that is. Again, I'm an extroverted person, so that definitely helps. Um, I tell people a lot that photography to me is a way for me to meet new people. And I do truly, truly believe that. Uh, I love it. I I feel like I give too much sometimes because it hurts when I lose a client. It hurts when they go with somebody else, especially if they've been working with me for a while. I've mentioned this in the early episodes of the podcast, but I don't look at this fully as just a business opportunity. This is something that you're, when you work with me, you're getting me, you're getting my personality. Um, I'm going to, when we're out on a session, I'm going to, I'm going to be as excited and happy as I can be. And I'm going to give you all these little insights into who I am. I'm not, I'm not going to hide aspects of my life. You know, I'm just going to, you know, if, if they ask questions again, it's really cool when I have like senior rep programs because, um, I get to, I get to open up a little bit more, you know, I get to hang out more with the parent. I get to know a little bit more about the senior, what they're wanting, um, what their life ambition is. And that to me is really cool because I feel like I'm able to imprint a little bit, whether, you know, I, I try not to give advice because they have parents for that. They don't necessarily need my advice, but every now and then they do ask And so I give my advice or every now and then the parent will ask. And so I will give my history or my take, um, whether they listen to it, whether they do whatever they want to with that information. I don't know, but, uh, I try to be an open book with every one of my clients. And I just think that for me, photography is 
the people, <laughs> which is, it has nothing to do with the camera, but it's the people. It's truly stopping time for them. And, and you know, again, the thing is, is I'm putting my own value on it too, right? I, I don't know if they're going to look back at these photos 10 years from now. I feel like some will. And to be able to provide beautiful imagery, create beautiful imagery for them is something that I will truly cherish. Uh, you know, like the collaborative stuff that I do, that's not necessarily as important because they're not celebrating a momentous occasion. But you know what? Collaborating to me is still interesting to the point that, you know, these people that I collab with, eventually they're going to stop. You know, a lot of the models that I work with are, are probably in their early 20s. Eventually they're going to get married. They're going to have kids. Uh, they're going to go on with life. And this portion of their life is going to be gone. And I that's again where I think it's really freaking cool to know that years from now, their children, their grandchildren are going to be able to look back at some of these images and say, this is you. This is what you did. And I just think that's the coolest thing. I think it's cool to be able to give people those memories, those timestamps in life. I, I think it's incredible. And I, the, the ego part of me, love that it's a me that have been able to do that for them. Yeah, I have an ego. I think a lot of people have egos. I love what I do and I feel like I create some pretty good work. And I love the fact that people are going to be able to look back and be like, that's me. <laughs> that's me. That's me at this specific point in time of my life doing what I absolutely love to do. And I think it's very important um, have you thought about what draws you to photography? What is it about photography that brings you back? What is that golf shot that you love so much about it? Please don't just say it's the money because the money is fine, but I don't think the money is. The money's not the whole thing, you know, I think we get into photography. It's a creative field. The money, you're never getting into photography to make money. You're not. You're going to lose so much money when you first get into it. Yes, you might be able to make it back. But it's not about the money. What is it that really kind of got you into photography and made you love it and keeps bringing you back to it? Think about it. Um, ponder on that stuff because I think sometimes we kind of forget where we where we were, where we started. Uh, and when you can kind of remember those things of, you know, this is why we did it. This is why we got into it. Uh, maybe that'll help change your perspective when you're in a rut, when you're struggling, when it's super busy. Uh, those times where you're like, oh, what am I doing all this for? Think back to those things of this is why I do it. This is what I love about it. And I think if you can remember those things and try to keep those things in your forefront of your mind, it will help you not get burned out. It will help you not stress. It will help you continue to love what you do. And that's all I got for this week. Thanks again for listening and tuning in. Until the next time, keep shooting.